So at the moment, this equipment system is running perfectly. We've got a variable speed pump on the right, a one speed pump on the left, a Triton 2 sand filter, a multi-port valve, a Pentair master temp heater, a zinc anode to help make sure that we don't result in any corrosion from the salt water. We have our IntelliClor cell going in the direction of the water flow. We also have a bypass valve. This would allow some of the water, instead of all the water going through the heater, this allows a little bit of the water to divert. Something to note on this system, because we do have that bypass valve, in order for the salt cell to function properly, the flow indicated on the unit needs to be green. If we opened this valve more, meaning if we turned it more parallel with the pipe, we would reduce the amount of flow through the chlorinator, resulting in the flow light turning red, telling us it doesn't have enough flow. After the water comes out of the heater, it goes to a couple of valves. There is a valve that would allow us to suspend the in-floor cleaning heads when people are swimming, if you don't want the heads coming up and down. You can always hit the button to bypass the cleaning system. Otherwise, all the water goes through the cleaning system in our Blue Square 360, Q360 unit down into the pipes where they would pop up in the pool. A couple other things to note on this pool. We have one really big valve, which is our main drain. In the pool, there's actually two. We use the MDX from Paramount, which has dual main drains, one that is really large to catch the debris that the in-floor cleaning system pushes down. The other two uh, handles that we have here are the two skimmers that are on this pool. The only things that a homeowner would ever need to really touch on this pool are the multi-port valve and the flow manually to change the bypass, the cleaning that happens in the panel. If for some reason the heater is not working, the first thing that we always suggest to do is turn off the system and perform a backwash. That'll clean out the sand filter and allow any debris that might be clogging it to get pushed out the backwash. And it would reset our pressure gauge on the top of the filter to normal operating pressure, which in this case is about 15 or 16. I believe this homeowner backwashed this last night right before I got here. So there we go. Also, if for some reason we're not getting enough flow for either the heater or the salt generator, on the variable speed pump, there are different speed settings. So we would be able to, if we needed to increase the flow, open up the panel and toggle it from, currently it's running at 2350, we'd be able to hit speed four, it would give us a boost and a little bit more power. One of the other things to note on systems that have two pumps, this one has the main operating pump for the pool system and filter and a secondary pump for the waterfall. If the first pump ever has trouble priming, it's a good idea to also prime the second pump simultaneously just because that plumbing is teed together. If there's any air getting in from the pump itself or coming back down the line, even though we do have some check valves, sometimes air sneaks in, you can call for priming of both pumps. Once they're both happy and running properly, then you can turn off the second pump and only turn it on when you'd like to engage that feature. The best way to learn about the Pentair Easy Touch automation system is to get in the panel and learn by pushing some buttons. If you get into the menu settings on an easy touch, you have a lot of different things you can find out. 
You can look at how the lights are set up. You can go to the heat. This is a key for the heaters. If you have a heater that won't turn on and you've got an easy touch system, always come into the menu, go into the heat, double check it and make sure that it says pool and that the set temperature is the highest threshold of temperature that you'd ever want to heat the pool to. If you have a pool set temperature in the panel of 50 degrees or 60 degrees, then when the system is in auto mode, it will be telling you that it can't go any higher than that. So you always wanna make sure that your temperature settings inside the panel are as high as you'd like them to go. Another thing that you need to do in auto mode is set up a schedule so that the pool knows when it's supposed to be on, the pool pump. So in this case, we have a schedule that is set for 8 a.m. to 7.59 a.m. every day. So this means that our pump will run for 24 hours a day. We also have an auxiliary number two, which is our pool lights. So in auxiliary number two, we popped a program in there, 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. Every day, the lights will come on for three hours and turn themselves off. The homeowner can always override this at the panel or change those settings if they'd like it to be any later. One other thing that is very helpful in the panel, especially if you have an IntelliClore, is to come into the diagnostic section and check the chlorinator. And at present, it is reading 3,050 parts per million of salt, which means it's actually happy with the salt level. We're green on the chlorinator, although 3,400 is our target level for salt. Uh, but obviously it has enough to function properly at the moment, so it's saying we're good, no errors, and there we go. The pool is currently in auto mode. The heater is heating the pool. Pool degrees 65, ooh, 67 currently. Heater is set to heat it up to 82. Air is 72 degrees, Saturday at noon.